Welcome to another edition of One More Light with me, Val Clyde Hands, where we break the stigma by talking mental health and everything that surrounds the topic, really. Today, Stephen Sharp Jr. is in the building. He's a content creator and mental health advocate that just does all the things. And I know we're going to learn a lot from him today. Stephen, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what is the story of your mental health journey? Oh, wow. Um, so I want to say that it started, well, it started to deteriorate in 2019. At the end of 2019, mm -hmm. um, I was working, uh, I was working a job in uh, interior design. And that job just, just beat it out of me. It just really Ugh. did. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just, i the way I describe it is like, I almost like reached the end of my capability to cope with what was going on like I think up until that point I was kind of able to really figure it out internally or talk to friends or you know by dwelling on it come to some epiphany but I think at the end of 2019 was when I really started to realize that I didn't have the energy to do that anymore mm. um so yeah, I started to look for a therapist and then COVID happened. Oh. Um and that kind of that kind of led me into talking about my mental health on my social media platform. Okay. Um because I started to notice that a lot of my peers were you know privatizing their mental health struggles while also like putting out to the public that they were doing just fine and to me it just felt so dis. It, it wasn't even that it was felt disingenuous I think for me I didn't want I didn't want to have to play that game mm -hmm. it <laughs> is a game wanna, yeah it is it's a facade absolutely yeah it's like I, I didn't have the I'm like I don't have the energy to put on a show and then behind this behind the screen I'm you know having a really tough time um, especially since like my work is so tied to you know who I am as a creator um, my ability to like show up and you know bring that energy yeah. Um, but yeah I guess it's from there it's just kind of blossom and it's grown and you know my the my uh, my community of people like they really hold space for what I bring um, and they you know the stuff that I talk about is very very much thing very much things that I've learned through experience or um, learned through study um, and I don't know I feel really appreciated by it but I guess like my mental health journey is ongoing. <laughs> it's, it, it always is. It, there's definitely yeah. twists and turns and yeah. moments of Scoop, we got to redo this. Uh, like <laughs> it, it's, it's full of everything, but you are speaking to my soul right now because that's exactly what started me on mine too. I was working in radio and then I just was like, this is soul sucking. Like, this is mm. not what I thought it was going to be <laughs> after like trying to make it work for seven and a half years. I was like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. I thought I would have way more creative freedom and it speaks to, mm -hmm. it's it's a form of creativity. And when you're that tied to something creative, it's a passion and you yeah. invest so much into it and you're like, okay, this is like actually killing my passion for it now because mm -hmm. you're corrupting it into something that I didn't think it was going to be. Yeah. And <laughs> so I, it kills your spirit a little bit and that does like screw with you mentally. It does. So I had to go through an outpatient program and learn how to just be mindful and let a lot of that go and observe yeah. more of it. And then also learn that this was just an environment that wasn't for me and that's okay. And mm -hmm. I can walk away from it too. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. And it takes forever. It took time. Like you have to put in work and time to come to that realization because it's not easy. I mean, I'm sure with you, you love interior design. You don't really want to leave it, but there comes a point where you're like, I, I can't anymore. Well, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I was in interior design because it was the work that I could do at that time. Um, oh, it was okay. where my, I really do feel that you know, I've kind of stepped into my own by running my own business and, mm, you know, okay. the freedom that it it allows me to really, you know, heal from a lot of trauma, to be completely frank. Yeah. Um, and to, I don't know, it's helped me develop a confidence that I, I just, I just know that it would have just 
been beaten out of me in like a work setting <laughs> or like a yeah. like in a traditional office work setting yeah sometimes it's not for everybody so when you're mm -hmm. talking about your own business are you talking about nobius creative or yeah are you just talking uh, about okay tell me about that yeah um it will well, yes, uh, Nobius definitely was a big part of it. I think also like just content creating in general mm -hmm. um, was kind of part of it. But yeah, I, I run an agency um, and we do content creation and uh, the the main part of it, I feel, or like the heart of it is uh, how we represent other creators. Um, so in 2020, I started to just realize how a lot of my friends were being taken advantage of by the contracts that they were signing. There was just a lot of jargon that, you know, wasn't being, you know, there was just like a lot of things happening behind the scenes and on paper that my friends just were completely, you know, unaware of what was going on. So I, I was like, you know, I've learned a lot in this industry already. Um, and I don't want to be the person that you know, pulls up the ladder behind me. I really want to mm. share my knowledge, especially if it's going to protect someone else. Yeah. So I started Nobius and um, yeah, now we represent several creators now. And it's been really great to see just like how the relationships have grown um, or the how, the how relationships have been developed just through Nobius now. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's kind of yeah. part of it. <laughs> Well, so specifically, you're you're pulling up for the BIPOC community for anybody that doesn't get it. Yeah, very, very yeah. much so. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I mean, I would imagine that it, with white creators, it's a completely different experience than it is for mm -hmm. the BIPOC community. What mm -hmm. were you seeing in your own community that was just not it? You're like, this needs to change. Um. Well the main part of it is the pay disparity um mm. i i feel like that is a really big part of it um and it's the one that's the most impactful because you know we all need resources as creators and if we're not all being paid equally or being paid fairly i should say then you know we can't sustain the creativity um <laughs> that's just yeah. kind of how it is um and yeah so I'm sorry, I just like lost my train of thought. <laughs> been going through a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what's been going on? What's on your mind? Uh, my mom passed away on, on um at the beginning of the month, so I've just been kind of yeah. working through that and and resting at home and, and yeah. just kind of working through all of that. But yeah, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being here now. <laughs> yeah, of course, I. You know, I really believe in, you know, <laughs> keeping things going and, um, and talking about mental health. I think it's really important, um, especially as like, you know, I pride myself on my my own transparency. So for me to not be, I don't know, to, for me to just kind of hide something that I've now made actually pretty public, um, I think would just be disingenuous. But yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. So if I lose my train of thought, it's likely the grief. <laughs> so bear it's with okay. <laughs> no, it completely okay. I mean, this is a safe space. This is a mental health podcast. We're talking about all of that. Um, Thank you. What, yeah, no, what are, so what are some of the things that you're doing to help, you know, work through this? It can't be easy. Does talking about it help? Um. It, it it really depends. I think mostly I've been trying to focus on resting and healing my body and under for me it's like more understanding what grief is and its effects mm. on the body. Um, I am not only going through it, but I'm also kind of like an observer of it as well um, through just you know self reflection and. Yeah. I'm just I I'm I'm noticing so many different things and I'm noticing so many different connections that grief creates um and just like how fickle and how disruptive it is but also like how pliable it is like it you know the the grief I feel now um may not be the grief that I feel in a month from now but this mm. grief can also just come right back around in like 20 years um and just like talking through to people um about grief um 
with people who've lost other parents and hearing their stories about like, you know, it's, you know, 20 or 30 years later. And they're just like, it sometimes feels like it's like just happened. And like learning that and knowing that is, that is like part of my, my future is it's tough to hear. It's like grief really kind of strips it down and it really just lays a lot of things bare. Yeah. I would imagine that there's maybe some comfort knowing that there is grace in the fact that there is no one size fits all grief journey for anybody. And that yeah. it, it can, it, it goes wherever it does and it lasts however long it does. And it comes up in all shapes and sizes and forms. Yeah. And I feel like that's also kind of the beauty of it. Like through sharing our unique stories, I, I, I notice a lot of similarities. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it helps me to know that like what I'm experiencing isn't just, you know, psychosis, it's literally a process yeah. and it is and like, and I think a lot of us, um, well, I, I can't speak for a lot of us, but <laughs> for me, I have really felt that, um, I don't know, I think I felt that I don't, I, I truly like trying to think of like what I even thought of grief. And I think there's no real comparison to what I'm experiencing now. Like I'm really experiencing something for the first time in my whole life. It really feels new and raw and kind of scary sometimes, but it's also like mm -hmm. really healing. Like, <laughs> Right. And a lot more normal, I think, than we realize because yeah. there's grief in all shapes and sizes, whether it's a loss of a parent, a pet, a cousin, a loved one, a friend. I mean, it, you could grieve through a divorce or whatever. That itself is kind of like a death. There's grief in that. It's yeah. a very normal part of life that sometimes I wonder if we don't talk about enough and yeah. all the different ways that it shows up. Yeah, because I think I even remember um, through 2020, um, I was, you know, I'd started my podcast Sanctum and yeah. was talking about grief, like collective grief um, and the grief that we were all experiencing during COVID of not just like people that we knew, but just knowing that there are just so many lives lost and there, there's so much you know turmoil in other people's lives like that I still feel in a lot of ways that we're still grieving um, yeah and like we see that in just like how you know honestly how violent the world has become since then um mm, you know, girl I, like I, I'm <laughs> an hour outside of Minneapolis I know what you oh mean. my god yes you do <laughs> very much so I know what you mean. It's been hard out here, but it, it I almost felt like it was necessary because for mm. me as a, you know, a white heterosexual person, it got us talking and yeah. it got us, it got us to realize this is really for real, like happening in front of our face. Now, this isn't something that pops up on the news from time to time. Like this is becoming a regular occurrence and we need to start asking why and what's, exactly. <laughs> what's going on here. Yeah. It's like, why and what is causing this and how long has this been really going on? I think, it's yeah it opened up a lot of our eyes even me like I you know really? I can't yeah I mean also I like I was surprised that I was surprised because I'm, I'm always like you know we all have our own experiences but I felt like I was still like I don't know I was so aware that even my experience was so different than mm. people like uh, black people who are darker skinned than me, black people yeah. who have different features than I do. Um, like there are just so many different experiences that I just was not, it wasn't even that I wasn't like privy to them, but I was just, I didn't understand the gravity of what was going on. Um, yeah, it's just, it was, it was, a, I mean, it continues to be a learning experience. And I hope that, like you said, like it needed to happen. I hope that this continues and like we push through these really really tough times um yeah. because like just like with our own healing journeys like it's as we we need to go through things we can't just overlook them because they'll continue to come back in different forms and different mm -hmm. emotions like we're, we're seeing we saw all of that like mm -hmm. it's just like we're seeing ourselves reflected back into what's happening in this world like it's uh -huh. kind of crazy 
here's the mirror we need a break <laughs> we need rest <laughs> like yeah your, your philosophy is rest before hustle can you explain that absolutely um so basically it is a reflection it's kind of was birthed from the like the soft life movement and uh mm -hmm. soft life movement um which originally started out as you know living living in a manner of rest first so that mm -hmm. you can show up to whatever you have going on showing up to you know manifesting and bringing your full self fully energized um so that we can op like act in the most optimal way so that's kind of where that really comes from is you know my own reflection of like my own journey of shifting that idea in my head that you know once I get to this point, then I'll rest. Or like, once I do this, then I'll rest. When I'm like, no, I need to rest <laughs> so that I have the stamina to hit those goals and hit them well. And like, be fully present when I'm hitting them too. Um, and that I'm also like, not just trotting on other people to when I'm on my way to get there. <laughs> Period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Period. How do you think that we can make social media a place that's better for our mental health? Um, I think, firstly, we need to just be honest about mm -hmm. what's going on. Like, like none of this, like, frou-frou stuff. Like, we get it. Like, you know, bath bombs are wonderful. We get it. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> it's so much more than that it's so much yeah. more than just like self-care days it, it is a it is a way of life it is a ritual it is something that shouldn't be new <laughs> these are like basic human needs um so like on like just being honest about our mental health um i think also we can also benefit from not judging other people's journeys mm. uh i see a lot of that weirdly like we talk yeah. so much about being transparent and you know being vulnerable and then when people are you know we like it's too much yeah, yeah it's like, too much we throw daggers or we start to like project on these other people of like oh they're attention seeking or all, all these <laughs> things like I see I all of term. this stuff yeah. yeah I'm just like it is it and it's like once you learn that it's like obviously it's their own insecurities that are being triggered but like before that you're just like wow then I'm never going to talk about this ever yeah, again and that right. that like breaks my heart that like someone would you know like I, and it's why I'm you know I'm I'm on my phone I'm looking at different posts I'm dropping things like I'm trying to be positive to all of these things yeah but I'm so I see all of this it's just so horrible so I'm just like let's just stop judging other people on their own journeys and like learn to ask like how can we support you not just mm -hmm. assuming like someone else's needs anyway yeah that's my soapbox you... <laughs> <laughs> no but it's important i i appreciate the transparency and the authenticity because you just put out a pretty important reminder recently one of my favorite posts of yours are you know just the ones in general where you give us a sneak peek into your life with your partner David but one of the captions of one of them said when arguments arise we discuss it with a goal to understand not punish mm -hmm. and how important that is why do so many couples miss that key part of keeping that line of communication open and not just couples like that's really mm -hmm. relationship one on one with anybody absolutely it's it's one of the things that i feel like i talk so much about and I feel like people get sick of it, but I, I, it's so important to communicate. And, you know, for me, I'm just like, what was one of the hindrances for me when I was communicating, um, especially in my relationship with David, was thinking that, um, thinking that he would judge me or thinking yeah. that he would like, um, do something to me or not honor what I would what I what, what I would bring to the table and I really had to like retrain my brain to be like okay this is a person that you trust you can communicate to him and you can yeah. just have if even if it's a tough thing like have the conversation now don't internalize it because you know if you internalize it it's going to come out some way and oh, yeah. it usually comes out in like these little jabs and these little remarks but if you're 
like one of the things we did was establish communication early on um mm -hmm. even like as we were friends like b way before we even got together like yes. as friends we we're just like let's just like you know like it was more just like hey like I trust you you trust me like we can be honest and vulnerable with each other um but it was always just like hey like if there's something I did to you please just let me know we can talk about it mm -hmm. um and yeah like even in friendships like I've started to you know be a lot more open with my friends of like hey this thing that you did did not like it and mm -hmm. I need you to know that and I need you to understand like what I need going forward from our communication and like honestly sometimes it does not go well <laughs> no like but oh, yeah. and I'm, I'm terrified of that I'm terrified of that which is probably why I'm the weird person that bottles so much of it in that it'll just like come out one day and they're like where is this from no. when and and <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of doing it to my own husband and I feel horrible <laughs> But it, it happens because I take things so personally when really it may have had nothing to do with me at all. Yeah. And, it, it, and it was like just me projecting, you know, my own bullshit for no it's reason. Ego. It's ego. Yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's all ego. Like once we, once you like realize and you can, you can spot your ego. Like I, mm. I know, like when I'm talking, I'll be like, wait, wait one second. I am yeah, putting myself check, into check. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, wait, I'm putting my ego before in this conversation and like I need to take a step back and I need to reevaluate because yeah. there's in order to have healthy communication, we need to set aside our egos. Not everything is about us. Right. Let's, let's listen to understand. Yeah. <laughs> let's listen to understand what that other person's going through, to um, to empathize, to trust them and believe them right. in their experiences. Like, I don't think that that's I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, I don't feel like that's very hard to do. Like, no, you literally just have to open your ears. Like, you don't have to say <laughs> anything or think about anything. You just have to listen and like mm -hmm. process what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes my husband has to stop me when I'm in the middle of that middle cycle. And he'll be like, I'm your husband. You can trust me. And then David I go, had to do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Why are like, we like in the same I'm relationship? I'm your partner. Like. <laughs> Like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> He's in the other corner laughing at me, too, because he knows it's the damn truth. He's yeah. like, <laughs> but, it's, <Okay. laughs> but it's so true. And I'm like, oh, God, if I if I came from that space to begin with, we could have avoided all of that. Yeah. And I should just make it a habit to come from that place to begin with and just remember that to begin with. Uh, so I'm happy to hear that you're a podcaster too, because I'm loving this conversation right now. And now I want to go back and listen to everything you've done. Tell me about oh. your podcast. Oh God, I haven't put out an episode in a long time, um, but it's called, yeah, it <laughs> it's called Sanctum. Um, and I started just like talking about people's, like literally just listening to people and listening to the people's stories and letting them share their mental health journey um, or different aspects of their mental health journey. And it was, it, gosh, I loved doing those podcasts. I really, really did. It's just, oh, I don't have the time to do it anymore. Um, yeah, sometimes but, that happens, but you learn so much with those conversations. Absolutely. And it's also like my, it, I see it as like my, my, uh, my passions have evolved. It hasn't like I haven't abandoned mm. Sanctum. It's still open, still available to listen. Um, but I'm not not having conversations. Like I'm still having conversations like these. You know, you know, I'm still speaking out about mental health and you know, hopefully creating more spaces for people to share their stories. Um, so it's like the work does not stop. <laughs> no, it doesn't. What's something that you think people get wrong about mental health? that you hope to correct maybe with your own story um, by sharing your own story. I mean, I, I think, well, one of the things <laughs> maybe kind of like meta, but that people think that they were doing their mental health wrong. Um, there's no wrong oh, way to yeah, yeah. do mental health. Um, yeah. There's also like no right way to do it either. Um, and it doesn't always have to look one way. I think, a lot of time like and this I guess in the last couple of years I kept being like oh I'm the mental health guy I have to be like very nice and very very calming <laughs> and you know I have to always show up and like all these different things and I'm like but that's not that is a 
part of me but that's yeah. actually not the biggest part of me i'm quite feisty you um, are sitting am... there like what in the lavar burton reading rainbow have i turned into like no it wasn't even that I was turning it myself into. I think I started getting this perception, like starting to allow other people's perception or my perceived oh. perception, mm -hmm. um, get in the way of like being who I like authentically am. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to speak my mind. I have, I can take up space. I can be angry. I can be happy and joyful. I can be sad. I can have a full range of emotion while still maintaining like my mental health journey like it's not mm. like I'm you know making some exchange like you know if someone comes at me incorrect I'm gonna set them straight mm -hmm. and then I'll be like namaste <laughs> like, <laughs> and namaste over here away that's from right. you <laughs> exactly and or I'm like I. I'll cut you off like if I block <laughs> you it's about me protecting my peace it's less yes. about you <laughs> yes that's always what but. it is we forget that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, if you, and I'm also like, you know, if people want to be offended by the boundaries that I set, I will allow that. That's okay. Because <laughs> you can't control what, what they take offense to. You don't know. No, it could be the but... most random thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like uh, trying to control or worry about other people's perception. And this is something I'm still learning mm -hmm. to control, like to live your life with uh, trying to appeal to someone else's perception of you is just not a life it really mm -hmm. isn't and I've lived too long <laughs> trying to like think of mm -hmm. how I'm being perceived when I'm just like you know there are just some people who are not going to jive with how I operate or how I set yeah. boundaries or like how I express myself and that's okay because right. at the end of the day they're not paying my bills they're yeah. not facts <laughs> they're... facts <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, just saying <laughs> uh -uh, you are not signing my paycheck you that's are right not paying, you are not beyonce i don't have to listen to you i will listen right. to you about you. <laughs> i'm like all of my charges on my amex I'm clear like, with clear. or without you <laughs> i have the receipts oh god that's no there right. was something there was something magical about turning 32 i don't know what it is but i just like it was like <sighs> okay finally i'm like i'm i'm tired and i'm too <laughs> old <laughs> <laughs> to be to be worried this much about what somebody else may or may not do or how they may or may not react to whatever yep. it is I'm putting out there and That's I'm like what happened to me at 30 <laughs> there's something about 30 I love 30 I'm 33 yeah. now and I I love it, it <laughs> yeah I'm it truly I'm 31 and I'm like the god I it was 29 29 oh, really? okay. yeah but I was like <laughs> This is starting early. Like, I'm tired. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's our... like, I'm just totally okay with being like, no, I'm not doing that. And I'm sorry if your feelings are hurt. I will send you flowers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I will apologize, but I'm not doing that. I'm not no. going there. I'm not e eating any of this food. I'm not going here. I'm no. Oh my God. So funny. I'm I'm working on that too, but it's, it's so necessary. What's next for you? What can we look forward to coming from you? Oh boy. Um, I have a lot of fun partnerships coming up. Um, looking forward to growing Nobius and starting to hopefully get into from the, like from the brand side and start running campaigns for brands mm. um, and getting our creators involved from start to finish. I think, there's a lot of um, ridiculousness in this industry and there's a lot of, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like, it's all just like bullshit and it's all, you know, people just trying to appeal to other people's egos mm. and that just like shotguns efficiency. And I, I pride myself on being very efficient. So I'm like, I can, I literally look at like these social media campaigns that are run like for influencers and I'm just like yeah. I could run this campaign and it would be so much more effective because I would go in with a make them I'll go in and make them make a plan and and put into put into place I'll implement the shit out of it yeah and then turn over the results I'm like I can do this job just like get in my inbox <laughs> so yeah. that's Let, basically what let's I'm doing. <laughs> go let's go it's time to go it's time to do work <laughs> yeah I gotta hype myself up you know <laughs> I gotta go <laughs> like it just gets me hype <laughs> Yeah, no, we all need that. I get that. And I'm I'm so excited to see what happens next. And I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. 
Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs>